Harlem. It's well known for its cultural contributions to the arts, its jazz clubs, soul food, and energetic nightlife, but not so much its wildlife. Within the confines of New York City, you're sure to find pigeons, cockroaches, and even the occasional peregrine falcon. But exotic cats, especially since the Big Apple, has strict regulations against pet keeping that include even a ban on ferrets, are unlikely to be encountered outside of the city zoos. However, one notorious incident would make its mark on the island city for years to come. On September 30th, 2003, a part-time cab driver and construction worker entered the Harlem Hospital Center's emergency room with bites to his arm and leg. His name was Antoine Yates. He was in his mid-30s and he claimed that he was attacked by his pet pit bull. Medical personnel, however, were suspicious. The width of the bites he sustained seemed to be produced from an animal with teeth much larger than a domestic dog. Regardless, he was treated for his injuries. On October 3rd, the day Yates was released from the hospital and headed for reasons that are unclear to the University of Philadelphia Medical Center, the New York City Police Department followed up on a tip that something was awry within a man's large five-bedroom public housing complex at Drew Hamilton Houses at Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard on 141st Street. Two anonymous tips were made to the police directing them to the same address. Upon first visit, there was no one home, but neighbors informed the police of urine smells and claimed they had seen quite a sight inside. As the officers began their investigation, they could hear growling sounds being emitted from behind the door. Using a camera attached to a pole, the police, after drilling a hole through the wall of a neighbor's apartment, were able to take a glimpse of the creature that had been making the disturbing sounds a full-grown, 425-pound Siberian Bengal tiger. The thing is, the existence of Ming, the apartment-dwelling tiger, was known to the community, perhaps through urban legends or rumors, for more than two years. Some neighbors even witnessed the cub when Yates first brought him home, and there were reports that he was seen walking it through the projects. Ming's owner regularly purchased large quantities of raw chicken to feed his pet, which the locals joked about. It was even reported that Yates had taken in roommates who were previously unaware of the tiger's presence. Even more shockingly, Yates' mother had done babysitting within the complex. So what would compel Antoine Yates to own such a large and potentially deadly predator in an environment such as a high-rise in the middle of the hustle and bustle of New York City. Yates always had an interest in pet keeping, which began with hamsters and injured birds when he was three years old. But as he grew, he began to set his sights on animals of the more exotic persuasion. According to Yates, he raised over 400 species of animals, including primates. He even eventually purchased a baby alligator which he named Al. Yates conceptualized a plan to create an animal sanctuary funded by familial support, a sort of utopia where animals would live together in harmony. He even put down a payment on some property north of New York City. Yates purchased Ming, named due to his interest in Chinese culture, in 2001 when a cub was just a few weeks old for a few thousand dollars from Bearcat Hollow Animal Park in Minnesota. The owners of this 25-acre private zoo, Kenneth and Nancy Kraft, were eventually charged with illegal sales of endangered species. The Krafts had also sold Yates a lion cub at some point, but Yates was reported to have rehomed it. He did, however, keep Ming. He brought the declawed cat to come live with him at the Drew Hamilton Public Housing Complex. At first, the tiny cub just needed to be bottle fed, but as it grew, it quickly required daily feedings of chicken thighs, about 20 per day. This required Yates to make daily trips to the supermarket. The tiger had its own sandbox and interacted with Yates on a daily basis. Yates considered Ming to be his calling in life and his best friend. City Housing Authority officials 
heard complaints about the smell of urine, but they heard nothing about Yates and his tiger. On the 3rd of October, 2003, an incident occurred that would upend their happy coexistence. The disruption came in the form of a stray cat Yates took in, which he named Shadow. The cat unfortunately escaped the room he was being kept in and wandered into the area where Ming was, resulting in the tiger lunging at him. As Yates tried to intervene, the tiger grabbed onto his leg for minutes, and he sustained a gash to his leg and bites to his arm. Doctors didn't buy Yates' story that he was bitten by a pit bull, and later the authorities descended on the housing complex, confirming the tiger was not a mere urban legend. To get the tiger out, the police planned to tranquilize the massive feline. One officer was to rappel down from the seventh floor on the side of the building and shoot the tiger through an open fifth floor window. You're going to get one shot, the city's chief veterinarian warned, informing the officer that the animal would charge and then retreat once the shot was made. The officer aimed and shot the animal, which immediately became agitated. Ming let out a roar and even broke the window while charging with the child safety gate stopping the tiger from reaching the officer. After it became apparent that Ming was not fully sedated, the officer fired again. Ming was brought to an elevator and carried out of the complex on a tarp by 12 responders in front of a crowd of shocked onlookers. My concern is that the city cat won't make it in the country, said one of them. He's going to have no jazz, no hip hop, he's going to miss the Harlem Renaissance. Yates was arrested and charged with the illegal possession of an exotic animal and reckless endangerment, of which he pled guilty. As a result of his plea deal, the charges were dropped against his mother, who raised eight foster children and relatives in a building with the tiger present. Yates was imprisoned for three months on Rikers Island and placed on probation for five years, being barred from having animals. I never put the public or another soul in harm's way. I'm not a hardcore criminal. I'm just a person with a passion for animals, Yates said. He claims that the tiger was rarely exposed to anyone else and that the children were present only when the tiger was younger. Ming and Al, the four or five foot alligator, were held at the Center for Animal Care and Control. Al was sent to a sanctuary in Indiana while Ming was relocated to Noah's Lost Ark Animal Sanctuary in Ohio, where he died in 2019 of natural causes. Yates apparently wanted to, quote, show the whole world that we could all get along. Some people may be surprised that Yates managed to raise the tiger for so long without any injuries or conflict. There is a common belief that tigers cannot be truly tamed because they are so-called wild animals. In reality, tigers, just like many other animals, can be tamed and have excellent dispositions. So-called lion tamers at the circus accomplish their daring feats by raising and socializing their cats and training them with similar methods as you would a house cat. While house cats are considered to be domesticated and tigers are not, both have more similarities than most people realize. Cats are actually not that different from their non-domesticated ancestors and are well known for being hunters of small animals. Tigers are not dangerous because they aren't domesticated. Rather, it is their formidable size and power that makes them inherently dangerous. Regardless of how tame and gentle a well socialized individual is, Ming clearly had a loving relationship with his owner, and Yates was bitten due to his surprise intervention, blocking the big cat from a desired live animal he may have wanted to hunt or play with. Any cat, domesticated or not, is capable of scratching or biting their owner in certain situations. However, Ming just happened to be so enormous, such a bite created a serious wound. Yates would gloat about his special relationship with the tiger, but there was nothing out of the ordinary about it. 
what Yates had accomplished was endangering not just himself, but the surrounding public by housing such a strong cat in such drastically inadequate quarters. However, Yates surprisingly did not enjoy the Netflix docuseries Tiger King because, quote, it just shows how ignorant these so-called exotic animal lovers can be. Yates now lives with his mother, who, when asked about the tiger, replied, he was tame, he was a good pet, they got along good together. Unfortunately, both Yates and his mother do not seem to comprehend how irresponsible their actions were. Yates was clearly financially unable to care for the tiger, but purchased him anyway, with no proper enclosure set up, in an area where doing so was highly and justifiably illegal. His actions have contributed to the negative perception of people who own unusual pets. Despite everything that happened, Yates still wants to create his dream sanctuary. In fact, after making failed attempts to get the tiger back, he has made claims that he is buying property to house more animals, and he has apparently attempted to become an apprentice of big cat owners in Nevada, where tiger ownership is actually legal. Antoine has called around to all the professional animal people I know, asking for apprenticeship, or can I hang out with you and learn your technique, said Carl Mitchell, a tiger owner. We don't want this guy here. Yates claimed to have investors lined up to purchase Thornhill Farm in western North Carolina, but the purchase of the $2 million property never happened. I've never met the man and he does not have this property under contract, said the realtor, Ben Wolf. A while back, I just stopped taking him seriously. It sounds like Antoine may be living in a little different world than the rest of us. I'll always love animals till I leave this planet. I'm not going to just give up because of the judicial system, Yates said. I love the experience. I would do it again.